There's a lot of countries in the world. It feels like there's always been this many. But when did it all begin? When was the first country? Well, when our ancestors hundreds of thousands of years ago would live in small little tribes, providing for each other day by day. But soon people figured out how to grow food and develop what we now know as agriculture. And those little groups of people started to grow bigger. Now people didn't have to go out hunting full time. Now people could stay closer to home and make more food. More food meant that a little tribe could support more people. And so that little tribe then became a town. As people discovered ways to produce even more food, even more efficiently, the town became a city, which became a country. This brings us to Egypt. Egypt really came together around the time of 5,000 years ago, today. Sure, there were a few small civilizations before Egypt, but Egypt is by far the most famous and well-known. The way Egypt went from becoming a bunch of small towns into a city was because Egypt had something very special geographically, the Nile River. The Nile River is this huge river spanning about 4,160 miles in length. This provided near infinite amounts of water to sustain the Egyptians, and the fact that the river once a year would rise up made the land around it fertile enough to grow an abundance of food. This is what gave Egypt the ability to sustain such a large population. If you look at the Nile River from space or Google Maps, you'll see that any land that touches it is green, while the rest is just a dry desert. Without the Nile, Egypt wouldn't have existed. But only half of the reason Egypt was able to make the change from a bunch of little towns scattered all over the place to a country was the fact that they had developed a form of leadership. Ship. At the top, there was the pharaoh, who is a lot like a king or queen. In fact, the pharaoh is exactly like the Queen of England. The pharaoh was the head of state, but a lot like the Queen of England, they didn't really do much. The pharaoh needed to be popular to stay in power, so the pharaoh would do things like participate in the military and claim that he was a god. Like how Prince William and Harry fight in the army in their Apache helicopters. The Queen of England also, just like the pharaoh, plays a part in her country's religion. She is the equivalent of the Pope since she is the head of England's religion, Protestantism. Below the pharaoh was the vizier. The vizier is a lot like the prime minister, in the sense that they are the ones actually running the country. But their boss is still the pharaoh, at least he thinks he is. Then below them were the nobles. These are people who own land and collect taxes from people who live and work on their land. Usually next comes the peasants, the people who work the land, or the farmers. But Egypt was a very well-off country, because their economy was able to support a class of people called the artisans. The artisans were builders and sculptors, people who made pottery or who cut stone. It's amazing that Egypt had this class of people, because normally everyone like 90% of people would be farmers, since in most places a family of people could normally only produce enough food to support their family. But Egypt's land was so fertile, thanks to the Nile River, that one family could produce food for themselves and have a bit more extra to sell to other people, which meant that people could start doing other jobs. This was the first kind of trade in the world. Fun fact, the artisans are the people who actually built the pyramids. Contrary to popular belief, it wasn't slaves who were constructing stones, but it was the artisans. Slaves would only be used for dumb labor like moving stones or collecting them. You know, Egypt had all these living people, but what happened when they died? Religion and the afterlife was an important part of every Egyptian's life. The Egyptians believed that there were two souls, the Ka and the Ba. One of these was a spirit that left the body on their journey to the afterlife and the other would stay with the person's body where they were buried. Most people were buried just anywhere. The pharaohs and nobles got lavish graves filled with jewelry and abundances of food and other fine luxuries, aka pyramids. So subsequently their tombs or pyramids were often robbed. In fact, every tomb or pyramid ever discovered has been found looted. Every tomb except for Tutankhamun's, who is famous because in 1922 a British archaeologist named Howard Carter found Tutankhamun's tomb. The only thing different was that its contents hadn't been touched. Everything was like the day was buried. Tutankhamun's body was preserved so well that you can go see it in a museum today, where his body rests in a climate controlled glass box. Tutankhamun wasn't a really special pharaoh. When he was alive, he died at the early age of 18. And even when he was alive, Egypt had a lot of unrest due to his wife, who was also his sister's religious beliefs. He's only so famous because he was buried in the only tomb that had been untouched until it was found by Howard Carter. But Egypt's greatest pharaoh would have to be Ramesses II, who ruled from 1279 BC to 1213. He was famous because he was a great warrior. He defeated pirates and invaders, especially in his campaigns against another country called the Hittites. I know, they could have picked a better name. It's said that in one battle, a humongous group of Hittites were approaching. 
which drastically outnumbered the Egyptian armies. Most of the soldiers had run off, but Ramesses and a few of his loyal men, who were not scared, stayed. In fact, they were able to cause enough losses to the enemy that they were able to get away. Ramesses also dedicated his life to building great works of art and temples, but he didn't build the one and only Great Pyramid of Giza. No, that one was built by Pharaoh Khufu. The pyramid took a span of 20 years to build. It today is still considered one of the greatest wonders of the world. It's amazing that the Pyramid of Giza and all the other pyramids could be built because the Egyptians had no machinery or advanced mathematics that they could have used to construct the Great Pyramids, especially with their terrible measuring systems. For example, Egyptians would measure things in inconsistent ways, like by the length of someone's forearm. Because people have different sized forearms, two miles to one person could be only one and a half miles to another person. So considering that people couldn't even communicate instructions to each other with full accuracy, it continues to be amazing that people could have achieved such heights. Or it could have been aliens that built the pyramid, but that's just a conspiracy theory. Sadly, Egypt today is nothing compared to what it used to be. It's one of the poorest countries in the world. But that's the end of ancient Egypt, and that's the end of this video. Goodbye.